In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create more powerful automations leveraging Zapier and ChatGPT. Hello, my name is Paul Miners and welcome back to another one of our Zapier training videos. Now last month I shared a video where I took you behind the scenes to show five of the time-saving Zapier automations that we use at my company to automate crucial parts of our business. And editor, let's link up here that video so if you haven't watched that already, feel free to go ahead and give that a watch. Now today, I want to build on that and show you again some real-world examples from our Zapier account and show you how we're using AI tools like ChatGPT to create even more powerful automations. And I really want to get you thinking about how you might apply the same idea and using AI in your business. As always, if you have any questions, leave me a comment down below. And if you'd like help automating processes within your business so you can save time and put more energy into the more crucial things that you need to do, then click the link in the description below to learn more about our Zapier support and consulting options. Now for my first example, I'm going to show you how we use ChatGPT to handle cancellations. Now in our last video, I explained how we use Calendly, which is our scheduling software, and we've linked that with Pipedrive, our sales CRM. So somebody goes to our website, a new prospect, they book an introductory call with us to learn about our consulting services, and then Zapier creates a contact and a deal in Pipedrive. Great. Now, sometimes somebody cancels their appointment, and it could be for any number of reasons. Maybe they were sick, there was a conflict, or they found uh, another option and they just no longer need the call with us. We need to try and work out, do we need to rebook them? And this is where we offload that work to ChatGPT. So we provide ChatGPT with a prompt and the cancellation reason. ChatGPT works out based on the reasoning, should we try and rebook them? And then we use Zapier to then create an activity for us to rebook that customer depending on the outcome. So here's our Zap that handles these situations. We have our trigger as our invitee canceled trigger event. So once they cancel, Zapier is triggered. We have a filter, so we only run this automation for certain types of bookings. And we do a couple of other things here. We get some information about the uh, deal. We do some formatting of the dates. And then we come down to a path. And this is one of the reasons I love Zapier. And one of the reasons we often rely on Zapier outside of Pipedrive. We can do a lot of automation natively in Pipedrive, but Pipedrive doesn't support conditional logic like this where we can split into paths. And so we find a tool like Zapier really helps us to create more powerful automations. Now, if they reschedule, we come down this path and we update the activity to the new time that they've booked. But we also want to, um, if they've cancelled, we want to work out, do we need to try and re-engage them to rebook? So we come down this path here, and this is where we use ChatGPT. So in our configuration settings here, uh, we put in the user message the cancellation reason. So whatever the prospect types into this box, uh, we put we feed that in as our input and then we have a prompt here where we say you're being provided with the reason someone cancelled an appointment in Calendly if the reason indicates that they'd be better suited to rescheduling the call please output false if it's clear that they don't need to reschedule output true so we let ChatGPT work out should we reschedule them or not and then we run one final filter so if true if they um, should reschedule or ChatGPT, ChatGPT thinks we should try and rebook them we create an activity to call the cancelled, um, uh, call cancelled, but reason would warrant reschedule. So we then reach out to see uh, if we can rebook them and to see if we can get another appointment on the calendar. This is a great example of how ChatGPT can help you to build more powerful zaps because there's really no way that we could build any logic into the zap to determine if we should rebook them or not. We could, we could try and find certain keywords, but really the cancellation reason is so open to interpretation, it's really where we need almost like a human being or some form of intelligence really to look at the cancellation reason, interpret what it actually means, and then make a judgment for us. Another way that we use ChatGPT is once we've finished a client consulting call, we take the recording and we use ChatGPT to create a really nicely formatted list of action items, which clearly says who's responsible for what. We trigger this zap when a Zoom meeting has ended. Uh, we run some filters, so we only run it on certain types of meetings. And then what we do is we find the appropriate 
client task in Asana based on the client's name that is uh, that appears in the booking. Um, we get the summary from Zoom because Zoom actually has its own built-in AI. It generates a summary of the meeting. And so we take that summary, but we reformat the next action points. And here is how we do that in ChatGPT. So we feed in the uh, next action items and we provide the following prompts. So we say, uh, list of action points, each mentions the person it's assigned to and the action. You're to output the actions, comma separated, as well as the persons, comma separated for each action item, no space after comma. Uh, so we're, we're really just trying to get ChatGPT to reformat everything into uh, a layout or a format that's just better for how we like to see things. Uh, we have some further prompts for these uh, values here. So we say a comma separated list of identified actions. The phrase for each action will begin with a capital letter and have no period at the end of it. And for the assignees, a comma, comma separated list of uh, identified assignees. So once ChatGPT takes those, those next actions, reformats it for us, we then create a list of action items and assignees, and we combine it all together and post a comment on the task in Asana. And here's an example of what that looks like. So we now have the person who needs to do it, so Warwick, and then the action item afterwards, or in this case down here, Sharon's team um, and what they need to do. So this is more useful to us than what we get from uh, Zoom. Uh, it's much clearer what the actual action step is and ultimately who is responsible for it. This is a really nice example of how, if you're not happy with how a native integration works, you can use ChatGPT and Zapier to create a system that's more suited to you and how you like to do things. So in this case, the Zoom summary is okay, but we would prefer it in a different format. And as long as we provide a very specific prompt to ChatGPT that says, this is how we want everything outlined, we can create a much more useful list of next actions. One of the most impressive ways that we use ChatGPT with Zapier, and I'm happy to boast about this because it was actually Warwick on my team, our Zapier expert who set this up and uses this, is we use ChatGPT to write custom code that we can then use in our Zaps. This is particularly useful if we find that the action items that we have available in ChatGPT don't really work the way we want, and we use code to create more powerful action steps. So here's the Zap we run again when somebody books a call with us through Calendly. Uh, we do a couple of things here, but what we're trying to do is find the corresponding deal that we have open in Pipedrive, our CRM. Now, on the Pipedrive integrations page, you'll see there is a find deal action, and you can find a deal by searching by a field like the title or ID, uh, but often we find that's a bit limited and we actually want to check multiple bits of criteria to find the correct deal. And so we do that using a code by Zapier step. So we're using uh, this a different way. It's just a different method of finding the deal essentially. And we've set this up. This is uh, running a Python script. And here is the custom code that we've generated. Now, if you're not comfortable writing code uh, or you, you're kind of like borderline, like you know a little bit, but you don't know how to write it from scratch, you can use the generate with AI button, or again, we use chat GPT for this to actually write code like this. And so we, we use this code to find the correct deal using a combination of title and uh, it, the, the most recent open deal and a few things like that. It's more specific to how we do things and how we want to find the, the appropriate deal. But what you see here, this code was written by AI. Now, if you are going to use ChatGPT to start writing code, I do want to caution you because you do kind of need to know what you're doing. The last thing you want to do is uh, write some code that breaks your system or worse, deletes data in your accounts. So I see this more as a tool for developers who know a bit about code and it's a time saver because the uh, ChatGPT can write the code for you get you sort of 80% of the way there. You can check it yourself, make some little edits, and it's gonna be a really nice time saver. Also, like I said, great for situations like this where you know the native action step, finding the deal, doesn't really get us the deal that we want, so we can create a more powerful action step that's more specific. We've been doing this for a while, and we find that using the, the custom code made by Zapier or ChatGPT to be a lot more reliable. Now let me share one more example of how we use ChatGPT in Asana to create content ideas and plan the content for videos like this. 
So here's our ZAMP that does this. This is triggered when we add a new task to our content project. We extract the post name from the title of the Asana task. And then if the video type is video, if the content type, sorry, is video, we then in a lookup table, we output this instruction, which we're gonna use in our ChatGPT prompt in a sec. We basically are telling ChatGPT, okay, for the video idea that we've got, we, wanna, we want you to generate three persuasive titles, three social media captions with hashtags, and we're explaining that this is gonna be used uh, to go on YouTube and shared via social media and our newsletter. Then in ChatGPT, we put in the name of the piece of content in here, and we provide this prompt. We say, you operate for Minico, an Asana Solutions partner and Pipedrive Elite partner and Zapier Premier expert. Minico helps small to medium-sized businesses to be more productive and efficient using these tools. You are a professional assistant providing a content strategy. You'll be given a content idea to which you'll respond with the following fields. And that's where we insert the number of persuasive titles, um, social media captions, and so on. ChatGPT then writes those titles and captions, and it outputs the result into the description of that task. I think this illustrates how to think about using AI and ChatGPT in your business. As I said earlier, it's a tool that can often do a lot of the heavy lifting for you and gets you 80% of the way there. So in this case, we provide the name of the video, ChatGPT comes up with title and social media caption ideas. Some of them are good, some of them are bad, but it gets us going, we can work from there, and it saves us time in the process. So that is a look at how to use ChatGPT and Zapier to create more powerful automations for your business. If you have any questions or if you have any suggestions for what we should be doing, feel free to leave me a comment down below. And if you like what you see, if you'd like to automate more of the processes in your business, click the link in the description below, book an introductory call with us, and we'd love to see how we can help you to save time using ChatGPT and Zapier.